Hey everyone, welcome back to AshDev. In this video, we'll learn about the orbital and free look camera available in Unity's Cinemachine. Last time, we explored non-interactable cameras where the player doesn't influence the camera movement. Today, we'll discuss the interactable cameras. These cameras allow the player to control their movement, offering a dynamic and immersive experience. Let's get started and see how to add an interactable camera in your 3D game. To start, just install the Cinemachine package from the Package Manager, available in the Unity registry. Then attach Cinemachine Brain to your main camera. Now create a virtual camera, then drag and drop the objects you want your camera to follow and aim at into the Follow and Look at fields. In the body settings of Virtual Camera, choose Orbital Transposer, a dynamic variation of the standard transposer that not only follows the target, but also adds the ability to orbit around the target based on the player's mouse input. Now you have different binding modes to choose from. We provided detailed explanations for each of these binding modes in our previous video. You can find the link to this video in the description below, which you can watch later. For now, we'll choose Lock to Target with World Up. Below this, you can adjust the Follow Offset, which lets you position the camera relative to the target. Then, the damping settings control how quickly the camera reacts to movements of the target. A higher damping value means the camera will react more slowly, smoothing out the motion. Next, we have settings related to recentering, which automatically brings the camera back to a central position after a set wait time. You can also adjust the speed at which the camera recenters by changing the recentering time. The direction it recenters to depends on the heading option you choose. You can opt for Position Delta, which calculates the heading based on how the target's position has changed between updates. If the target has a rigid body component, you might prefer using Velocity, which bases the heading on the target's movement speed. If there's no rigid body, it will default back to Position Delta. Alternatively, you can use Target Forward to align the camera with the target's local forward direction or World Forward for a consistent global forward direction regardless of the target's orientation. These options give you flexibility to ensure the camera behaves in a way that suits your game's design and mechanics. Next, we have the horizontal mouse movement settings to control the camera's orbit. The value setting captures your current mouse movement, while the speed adjusts how quickly the camera orbits in response, ensuring the movement feels smooth and natural. The speed mode is set to max speed to make sure the camera moves at a constant rate, and the input value gain increases the orbit speed based on how quickly you move the mouse. Now, if you're looking to implement a more advanced orbital camera setup, then you might consider using the free look camera in Cinemachine. This type of camera is similar to the Orbital Transposer, but offers enhanced functionality with three separate orbits, top, middle, and bottom, connected by a spline that allows for fluid and comprehensive movement around the target. This setup is ideal for vehicle simulation games like Forza or action-packed titles similar to GTA, and it can also be effectively used for character controllers. With this camera, you get to fine-tune not only the horizontal rotation settings, similar to those in the orbital transposer, but also the vertical movement settings. Additionally, this camera includes recentering features that work on both the X and Y axes. You can define the heading, set the weight, and recentering times. With these settings, the camera automatically adjusts its center based on your specified preferences, maintaining optimal focus and enhancing the player's visual experience. Next, we have the orbit settings. In this section, you can choose your preferred binding mode, which controls how the camera follows and orients itself around the target, same as in Transposer. You can also adjust the spline curvature, which affects the camera's path during vertical movements, giving you control over how smoothly the camera transitions between different heights. Then set the height and radius for each of the three rigs, this allows for precise customization of how far and from what angle the camera views the target. For each individual orbit, you can go even further by overriding the default look at target. This is incredibly useful if you want the camera to focus on different objects or areas depending on its current orbit. Additionally, you can tweak the damping settings to refine how responsive or smooth the camera movements are. You also have options to select different aiming algorithms and fine-tune other aim-related settings to perfect how the camera aligns with its target. 
And if you're looking to add a bit more realism or cinematic feel, there are noise settings available for each orbit. These can introduce a subtle, natural shake or jitter to the camera, mimicking real-life camera movements. And that's it for this tutorial. I hope you found it helpful and learned something new. If you have any questions or suggestions for future videos, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Thanks for watching.